Hey everyone, Brent back again for another weekly lesson on how Jesus calms our fears. If you remember back in week one, we talked about the story of Jesus and the disciples and how he calmed their fears after they thought they saw a ghost when it was actually Jesus. In week two, we talked about how Jesus met a man named Jairus, whose daughter had died. And Jairus, Jairus I can never say his name right, was afraid because of this bad thing had happened and how Jesus calmed his fears and raised his daughter back to life. Last week, we talked about a fisherman named Simon who met Jesus, and he was afraid of Jesus because his heart was troubled. He didn't think he was good enough for Jesus as a stinky, sinful fisherman. And Jesus embraced him and said, Simon, I want you to tell others about me. And we talked about how our hearts can also be troubled. And sometimes we, we think that Jesus needs to be out of our life rather than in our life because we th feel our hearts are too troubled for him to care about. And we learned that he does care about us. Well, today is another story on how Jesus calms our fears. And this story is another story about Jesus and the disciples. And now it's the, the first story that we had when Jesus calmed the storm. That was early on in Jesus' ministry. Now this is kind of the end of the ministry, right about the time that Jesus gets arrested and is going to die on the cross. And here's how the story goes and, and what happened to the disciples. Then Jesus told his followers, or his disciples, you will one day all lose your faith in me, because it is written in the Old Testament that when men come to arrest me to take me to die on the cross, all of you will run away. One of the disciples said, Jesus, we will never do that. I will never run away from you. And Jesus said, oh yes, you will. Jesus and his followers then went to a place called Gethsemane. Jesus said to them, here comes the man who has betrayed me or turned against me. And while Jesus was still speaking, Judas came up. Judas had been one of the 12 followers, and now he had many enemies with him, and they had swords and clubs. Judas had planned a signal for the enemies to arrest Jesus, and he had said, The man I kiss is Jesus. Arrest him, and guard him while you lead him away. <clears throat> so Judas went to Jesus and said, Teacher, sarcastically, and kissed him. Then the men grabbed Jesus and arrested him, and all of Jesus' followers left him and ran away, just like Jesus had predicted. A few days later, after Jesus had died on the cross and then come alive again, Jesus' followers were together. They were hidden in a house. The doors were locked because they were afraid of the men who had killed Jesus and thought that these men would come and kill them too for being Jesus' followers. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, Jesus showed up and came and stood among them in the house. He said, Peace be with you. After Jesus said this, he showed them his hands and his side to prove that he indeed was the risen Savior. His followers were very happy when they saw Jesus, and their fears went away. Today's story tells us that Jesus' followers, his disciples, were all afraid. Why were they all afraid? Because they thought that they would be killed for being Jesus' friends and followers. So they were hiding out in a house, hoping no one would find them. Now, it probably wasn't a house this small, but it was a small house, and that they were all crowded in. And though I don't have... 11 or 12 guys, you know, I kind of have one guy that's hiding in the house. Maybe they're looking out the window and seeing what's going to happen. Are the bad guys going to come and get them? And as they're in the house, fearful for their lives, afraid, not knowing what to do, because in their minds, Jesus is still dead. They haven't really believed that he had risen from the dead yet. And all of a sudden, as they're hidden in the house, Jesus comes and says, guys, it is me. And he shows them that he is there. And he lets them touch his hands and his side and see that he is indeed risen and that he's with them and that he will protect them. Well, they leave the house. They're not afraid to be in the house anymore. And they walk through the door. Or maybe they drop through the door. And they begin to walk again out in the streets of Jerusalem because they're not afraid anymore. They know that Jesus is with them. And the one thing that helped calm their fears was the first thing that Jesus said to them. When he came into the house and saw them, the first thing that the Bible says he said was, Peace be with you. Because Jesus knew how the disciples had been feeling. He knew that their hearts were anxious and fearful. And so he brought a peace and a comfort through his words. And then they felt safe because Jesus was with them and they felt safe to go out into the city again. That story sure fits in with us, doesn't it? A lot of us are stuck in our homes, 
unable to go swimming at the pool or to the library or to the mall or to a church or to circle of friends or to day program because of this crazy coronavirus that we don't even understand. Maybe like the disciples, you're feeling afraid because you know you can't go outside and you don't want to get sick and you're not sure what's going to happen. But you know what? Just like Jesus appeared to the disciples and said to them, peace be with you. Jesus wants us to know his peace too so that we won't feel afraid. How does he do that? Well, he gives us the Bible and verses in the Bible to remind us that he is with us, even though we cannot see Jesus. Jesus says in the Bible in John 14, 27, these words, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Isn't that awesome? In these crazy days of being stuck inside, remember that verse and be comforted knowing that Jesus is with you. Yes, we cannot see Jesus anymore like the disciples could. But what I always tell my little boys at home is that Jesus, just think of him as kind of invisible. He's there in heaven looking down at us, but he's still with us. And we can believe the Bible is true when it says that Jesus is with us and his peace he leaves with us and he will always be with us. So be encouraged by those words, everyone. And I trust that these few weeks of devotions are encouraging you and will continue to encourage you as you discover how Jesus calms our fears. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for this story that reminds us that you're always with us. Thank you how you brought peace to the disciples when they were scared and hiding in the house. Thank you that you can bring peace to us when we're scared and having to stay in our houses and care programs too, God. Help us to remember that you love us so very much and that you give us your peace and you will leave us your peace. Amen.